this subject has been a tough one. Because all the way along, all these years, 30 years, I was thinking to myself, um, maybe there's more. That's what I was thinking. You know, that's a little bit of doubt, that what you know is not enough, right? So there's a little bit of doubt that says to you, I wonder if we're supposed to get to the place where we can cast out devils. We're doing it every day. Yes. Okay. So that's why this subject was a little hard for me because I was raised in all those circles where we talked about devils and people cast out devils. and So that I've dealt with. I got rid of that. I think some of us, when we're reading the New Testament and we see that Jesus casts out devils, we've got some questions. Obviously, we've got some questions. So I'm going to run some other questions by you and just tell you how my brain works. Because I love the Bible, I love overview, right? And so I do see an overview, and I also notice when things are out of pattern, now get this, so we have Jesus in the New Testament casting out devils. Then in the book of Acts, you have the apostles casting out devils. So what I do is I start looking over the whole Bible. And I say to myself, how come they didn't cast out devils in the Old Testament? If this is supposed to be something that Christians are supposed to learn to do, like physically do it, then when you get to the letters of the apostles and to the book of Revelation, how come there's no teaching of how to do it? See, but you have to go beyond the carnal into the spiritual because yes. you're looking at it carnally, well... Okay, this is just the way my head works, okay? Mm -hmm. So then I start thinking, just wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus said that he fulfilled all scripture, right? Mm -hmm. That means the Old Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means when he's casting out spirits, he's fulfilling everything in the Old Testament. Again, here we've got a problem. Because when we get to Jesus, we think he's doing something that... The prophets of the Old Testament never did. Yes, yeah, so in other words, we're, we think he's doing something different. Yes. You have the leaders today thinking that we must do greater things than Jesus. They take the words of Christ and say, greater works than these shall you do. What we have to understand is what does he mean by greater? Yeah. We know what the flesh means by greater. The flesh wants a show. The flesh, yeah. Both the fireworks and the, yeah. the marching bands and the... Yeah, things. the flesh wants wow. Mm -hmm. The flesh wants, let's impress the crowd. The flesh wants, holy cow. Mm -hmm. Did you see that demon manifest? That's what the flesh wants. They want a manifestation of some outward experience. Right. Yeah. So It's just more. You were just doing more. No, I believe the word greater mm -hmm. means the spiritual understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. See, we've grown that way, haven't we? Because Jesus came in the flesh, the weakness of the flesh, and manifest the word of God to us. Mm -hmm. He manifest the character of his Father fully and completely. And it's just hard on our brain because we go, really? In a man, in the flesh, God manifest his full glory, his full character, everything. Right? Now, another question. And this is actually from... Before any of us were Christians, we were in the world, right? 
Do you remember what people said about God and the devil in the world? Most people would compare God and the devil as two equal forces. Mm -hmm. We know now, as we grow up, no, God and the devil are not equal forces. But, how much has the church exposed the teaching about the devil? Sure, they've knocked him down a notch or two, but have they knocked him down enough notches to reality? No. No. Well, they still think he's capable of doing certain things to us. I am saying that when we read the Bible, and we read that Jesus cast out spirits, there's something in us that says, should this be something that Christians should do? And the reason I'm saying that is I was listening to a video, another video on YouTube, and these people were trying to reform the church, go back to the book of Acts. That's what they wanted to do. But here's the trap. If you don't knock the devil down enough notches, the next thing you're doing is casting out spirits out of people that believe in spirits. Can I make it as simple as possible and then we'll do the word studies to open it up? I believe that casting out devils is something we should do, but it is in the form of casting out ideas. Casting out false teachings, casting out false concepts of God, and casting out false concepts of the devil. Because there's concepts that come up in our minds when we're reading our scripture that we've heard from the world and from the church that is totally uh, contrary to the living word of God. That needs to be thrown down. Here's the other problem. All around us in the world, has the devil been exalted? Yes. Oh, sure. Made into imagery? That is a powerful image. Mm -hmm. Right? So we've got all of that, too. Mm -hmm. We've got all of that influence from the world. Mm -hmm. The artists and the movies and... We're dealing with an exalted image of Satan in the church. We're also dealing with an exalted image of Satan in the world. So therefore, sometimes you wonder, why are these false teachers doing so well going around with their so-called deliverance ministries, casting out demons... And it seems like, are these people Christians? Are they they just aware of how the show works? Or are they also of the world with assumptions about the devil? Yeah. Because wouldn't it be a mixture of people going to these deliverance meetings? Okay. If you believe that you've got problems in your life, in your family... If you believe in, let's say, generational curses. Mm -hmm. If you believe in curses of any kind. You will get sucked in to this teaching that whatever's bothering me or what's, what's affecting the history of my family, could it be cast down by casting it out? In other words... We're going to bypass Christ and find a relief from what's going on in our lives. Now, I'm going to bypass the revelation of Christ. I'm going to say, I'll just uh, casually know Christ. But then, I've exalted the devil in my life. So, instead of coming to Christ and get rid of these ideas by the cleansing of the revelation of Christ. The book of Malachi talks about Jesus being the refiner's fire and the launderer's soap. What needs to be cleansed is the minds and hearts of the believers in the church. 
Let's say you're just assuming, I know God, just like your friends. They say, I know God. Now I'm sort of trying to get to know Jesus. No, you've got it backwards because you've got to come to God through Christ. The knowledge of Christ reveals the knowledge of God. The character of Christ reveals the character of God. Do we have a lot of assumptions about God built into our thinking because of the world and the worldly church? Now, those become what I call strongholds. They can be cast down. What we're going to do then is just what we've done in the past. We're going to do a word study. Obviously, I am convinced that this is going to be one of those video series that's going to be very lengthy. Dealing with this subject when it comes to the devil and casting out demons and the ministry of Christ and so on, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with a few scriptures in every teaching, but also word studies as we go along. Because Mark and I have been enjoying this so much. Not only have we been studying the devil and demons and spirits and Satan as words. Now the other thing I feel that we need to add to the word study is the word casting. To cast to cast out mm -hmm. word by word, concept by concept. Because I know I have done this so many times now in my life. I remember 30 years ago coming out of all this teaching about the devil and spiritual warfare and so on. Now, I did share with you my experience Okay, my experience was I'm studying the Bible for weeks and weeks. I had stopped praying. I had stopped all that spiritual warfare. I'm just in the Word. There was all of that stuff previously, the spiritual warfare. I always felt like I was aware of what the, uh, the evil forces were up to. I was aware of the devil. There was this something about me that I thought I was very discerning as to what was going on. Yeah, my head was spinning. The turning in. Yeah. So here I am spending weeks and weeks in the Word. First of all, dealing with my concept of God, I knew I had to start over with Christ as my foundation. But as the weeks went by, it just dawned on me one day, hey, where did the devil go? What's going on in my mind is, because I was busy for years fighting the devil, I always thought that I could sense him. And here I am, spending time in the Word. I am thrilled. I am thrilled with what I'm learning. I'm spending hours and hours and hours in the Word, Okay, let's do the word study. I'm going to study the word cast or casting. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17, starting in verse 15. There's a story about a man that brought his lunatic son, sore vexed, and the son often fell into the fire or into the water. And the story goes like this. I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus got after them and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer or put up with you? Bring him to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and the he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. The disciples are a little confused now because they're thinking, how come we couldn't do it? How come? How come? How come it was so easy for you? Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith 
as a grain of mustard seed, that's a tiny, tiny seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, something that I understand. Now, to most people that hear this, they would think, Jesus, you just made it harder. Because if I couldn't cast out the devil, and you're making it sound simple like we're going to say to a mountain, Remove to yonder place. And all I need is a faith of the size of a mustard seed? I am not getting this. And many Christians don't. The key is, for me, I used to read this and think, yeah, he is making this into a huge problem. Because I can't cast out the devil and I can't move the mountain. Why couldn't we cast him out? And so Jesus brings up this mountain, and we think, how are we going to cast out the devil if we can't move the mountain? You have to understand what I did. I began studying the mountain. I began to study all the places where Jesus talked like this. The same language as casting out the devil, he said to cast the mountain into the sea. Now, first of all, we have to figure out what the mountain is. Christian teachers have told you the mountain is some problem in your life that is not in context of the Bible. The mountain that Jesus was referring to was the mountain where Jerusalem was standing, where the temple was. Jesus was finished with it. And he said, cast this mountain into the sea. In other words, this system, this carnal system, throw it into the sea. Now, when you understand the language he's talking about spiritually, then you'll never worry about looking at a physical mountain thinking you have to move it because you already have done the greater thing then moving the physical mountain, the greater thing was you moved the spiritual mountain and were able to cast it away, throw it out, cast it down. So therefore, all this talk about the coming of Christ, where they say, well, the temple has to be restored in physical Jerusalem, in physical Israel. No, you've not thrown that mountain into the sea yet. Go ahead, throw it down, because Jesus raised up his true temple on the third day when he was raised from the dead. You don't need that mountain anymore. That is just a burden for you that's going to confuse you. Throw that mountain into the sea. Let the world have it. You don't need it. Because we have been established on a new mountain. It's called the kingdom of God. It has a foundation. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. I'm quoting Daniel chapter 2. Where he talks about the rock being cut out without hands. Cut out of the mountain without hands. And it came and destroyed all the kingdoms of men. And then that rock grew into a great mountain that filled the whole earth. That is what we need to be founded on. That mountain is a fortress of protection to believe in Jesus Christ while you grow in knowledge about so many other things. It's a safe place to be. Why? Because you've thrown away the teachings of men started fresh. Jesus, I'm starting from scratch. Now, do you see he's saying, you can move this mountain with the faith of the size of a grain of mustard seed once you understand it. I am saying the same thing about casting out spirits. Many of you are actually casting out demonic strongholds ideas, 
concepts already and you don't know that you're casting out demons because someone has never told you you're casting out demons but you are already because you are casting down thoughts and imaginations that kept you bound in the past now some of you may may be thinking well I just just got tired of that scene and I've left it alone Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe you become dormant. I believe you've been going in the right direction all along. When you stop following men and men's teachings, you said to yourself, maybe 30 years ago, just like me, I'm not following men anymore. I am just going to read my Bible and make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Let's go to the scripture that talks about that casting down imaginations. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. These are the two main scriptures that I'm going to use, and then we're, we're going to expand the meaning of what we're reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Did you hear that? We're not dealing with physical mountains. And we're not dealing with physical demons. And we're not dealing with physical people. We're dealing with spiritual problems in our minds and in the teachings of the church. Those are spiritual. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, you could accuse me 30 years ago because I became dormant. Just a guy reading my Bible, loving it, doing it for hours a day. I became dormant because I was no longer praying. I was no longer fighting. I wasn't even doing all the things that the so-called pastor is supposed to do because I knew all of a sudden I learned what was vital, absolutely vital, was the Word of God. Now keep in mind, I had been a pastor for many, many years. I could come up with a sermon, but that didn't mean I was spending time on the Word. All I was doing was pulling out scriptures here and there to make up a sermon. This is different. I'm spending time in the Word every day going, wow, wow, wow. That's what I'm talking about. Now to someone else, a Christian might even come by and say to you, how come you're not around anymore? How come you're not taking part in some of the social activities in the church? Well, I don't know why. I just, I guess I've been caught up in reading the Bible. I just haven't got any more interest in a social club. I'm not interested in um, counseling. I, I just love the word. There's something happened to me. But you see, at the same time, as you're being dormant, you are actually casting down all the things that people think you should be busy doing. What the pastor thinks you as a Christian should be doing. What your Christian brothers and sisters think you should be doing. You're doing the right thing and they're all thinking, you've gotten lazy. Because all you're doing is reading the Bible. And you know what? It continues to this day. I am not saying that, like back then, 30 years ago, I spent hours and hours and hours in the Word. Now, I know I can't do that now. Because I have responsibilities. But... There are times in the day that I've set aside, like especially in the mornings. I love those times. 
I get up early and I just want to spend time in the Word. And that darn Mark keeps calling me. <laughs> and that what? That, that darn Mark keeps Mark calling Mark, he calls me. But you know what? That's great because Mark calls me at the right time because I'm saying, I've got some things to share. And Mark is saying, I've got some things to share. Why? Because in our casual time, like some people would actually think, you guys are actually lazy because you read your Bible. Isn't that like sort of like reading a book? It's not the same, is it, Mark? Demons, or the concept of demons, brings death. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Lifeless. Remember what I said, idols are made by the hands of man, but there's nothing there. There's no life there, they don't breathe, they can't solve your problems, they can't think, they can't even move. The idol can't speak for itself. Only the prophets of the idol speak. But Jesus, the Son of God, He's real. He's real. His Word is real. He has spoken to us by His Son and by the Word of God. By How do I understand this? Jesus was the Word of God made alive. He's the living Word. So when we understand Him, when we read the rest of the Bible, then we see, ah, the Bible is now coming alive. Why? Because I've made Jesus Christ the living Word in my life. Like you think, okay, Jesus cast out devils. How come we didn't see that in the Old Testament? Well, they did. The prophets are coming... Say you're worshiping the wrong God. The prophets did. We just have certain terms in our life thinking, casting out devils. It's got to be exactly that term, casting out devils. But when you go to the book of Jeremiah, God's calling Jeremiah to do what? To pluck up, tear down, root up. It's the same language and you're thinking, well, that's not the same as casting out devils. It is to me. So when you think of Jeremiah, all the prophets, all the good kings, what did they do? They tore down, they plucked up, they pulled down, they cast down, they cast out the false concepts of God. Now, Jesus is literally personifying everything the prophets did. We're thinking he's doing a new thing because he's casting out spirits out of individuals. No, he's doing the same thing that the prophets did. For the sake of the people, tear down these false concepts. Tear down those high places. Yep. All the high places. See, the high places, we think, oh, it's the heavens. No, high places were mountains where they'd go up and they'd make these beautiful areas. Where they would call them groves, trees. It was beautiful. It was like a park. And you have an altar to a false god, very attractive. You've got these beautiful trees around it. But every once in a while, God would come along to someone, like Gideon in the book of Judges, chapter 6. He says to Gideon, go and tear down your father's idol and the grove all around it. Chop up all the wood and burn that idol. Destroy it. So he did. Now everyone is upset. So they come searching for Gideon. And Gideon's just... He's basically hiding because he knows what he did. It was a good thing, but he knows that the people are going to be upset. When they came looking for Gideon, actually his father stepped out. Now, this is interesting because the father had the idol. 
But even the father had enough sense to think this. Hmm. That means that if a man can tear down that idol, then it's not a real God. So he came out to the crowd and he said, Why are you defending Baal? If Baal is a real God, can't he defend himself? So at that very moment, Gideon was given a new name. Jerubbabel, meaning let Baal speak for himself. <laughs> Why are you here as a mob to speak for Baal? If he's a real God, he doesn't need you, does he? But is he a real God? Let's see. Will Baal protect himself and speak for himself and deal with Gideon himself? Let's see. Nope, there was nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why? Because the idol was cast down. You could use the same language as what you're learning in the New Testament. Gideon cast out the devil. Now, over the weeks, the following weeks, we're going to have to go deeper and deeper and deeper into this because some of us are still thinking, well, that's not quite the same as Jesus casting out the devil because you're thinking it's a real spirit. It's not just an idea. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, they've exalted that idea. I just want you to think over the next few weeks. Like Mark says, it's sort of like dealing with a meal that has to be taken apart and then you, you don't eat it all at once. You eat it during the week. Mm -hmm. I am laying the foundation that when you cast down imaginations, you're actually casting out devils. Because the devils... And the imaginations are the same thing. I think I'll end it there.